This is Irvin Lee. Today, we're going to be talking about divine intervention. So stay right here. Keep it right here as we talk about divine intervention. Join From Beer to the Bible every week as Irvin Lee and co-host Sarah Oliveira McDonald warn others of the consequences of drug and alcohol addiction by being the voice of faith-based recovery. Every week, Irvin and Sarah help people get access to the treatment and counseling they so desperately need. They explore the depths of addiction and give practical life examples of how to recover and develop a new rhythm of living. The show is gritty, authentic, and simply raw while being rooted in the love, faith, and hope of God. Welcome to From Beer to the Bible. Welcome to From Beer to the Bible. I'm your host, Irvin Lee, and I got my good friend, my good new friend, and full disclosure, we go to the same church, Gateway. Shout out to Gateway, my good friend, Abel. How are you, brother? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I am. I am so overjoyed to have you with us and have you talk about your testimony. So I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Sure. Um, Please like, share and subscribe to From Beer to the Bible uh, at FromBeerToTheBible.com. And you can also support us there. Um, because we survive on donations, so we appreciate your support. Again, that's from beertothebible.com. Hey, well, let's jump right into it, man. Okay. How, uh, what's what's uh, what's going on with you, and how's life? Well, I've been doing really good. Um, yep. I've been working my AA program right now. We just started a uh, group at yep. Gateway, yep. North Richland Hills Campus, and okay. uh, it's going really good. I okay. really enjoy it. Yeah. All right. What's what's the most rewarding part about a twelve step recovery group, especially with it being at the church that we both love, Gateway? Yeah. I mean, I mean, we just ha- I just have a lot of we have a lot of support from the church. I mm-hmm. mean, they're very supportive, and um, I mean, just from recovery, I get so much out of recovery. Yeah. Right? You know? Yeah. I I know how it is from my own personal experience. Um, to walk into a church environment as someone who suffered from addiction, alcoholism, a lot of times there can be stigma associated with it. Talk about our approach at Gateway and how we kind of remove any concerns around stigma from addiction or alcoholism. Well, I mean, um, so Gateway, I mean, they've, course they've opened the uh recovery program mm-hmm. and uh you know they've talked about recovery i think they've had you uh do a small video there yeah. at the at the campus and uh i mean the pastors are very humble down to earth you know yeah. everybody has problems you know it's yeah. not like um we're perfect or anything right yeah well a stat that I heard is that 90% of all the people in the continental U.S. are affected, touched by addiction. May not be you, but it's a loved one. It's someone in your family. Normally, mm-hmm. uh, we all have it. So that is comforting to know that we all share that, whether we want to recognize it or mm-hmm. not. And that should help people realize that. If you're sick, you go to a doctor and church is for sick people, right? So uh, I think, and I commend Gateway for recognizing that. Uh, But I also want to shift gears a little bit and I want you to tell us your story and your testimony. Wow, it's a a long story. I mean, Mm -hmm. I know uh, I kind of start where I started off with addiction, right? But it's kind of like there is a, before that right yeah the addiction was just just a very you know just uh i guess part of it yeah but it's just a symptom yeah right i had a lot of other problems before that you know Mm -hmm. from being a kid you know and i'm still struggling with a lot of things right it's not it's a struggle every day yeah yeah so um i remember the first time i guess i smoked weed was probably like i was like 14 years old okay at a party, you yeah. know, I was hanging out with some high school kids and stuff, yep. and uh, and I really enjoyed it. Right, it was the first time I could really laugh and 
had a great time, you know, and I, and, uh, I wanted to do that again, right? Because I realized I kind of was always kind of depressed and yeah. frustrated and angry. So, mm -hmm. and at that moment it was, you know, a lot of fun. So, uh, I, I quickly developed like an addiction, I guess, okay. you know, quickly developed that addiction. I was doing it every day, started, you know, just opened up a whole new world. Right. Yeah. And, uh, with new friends, meeting new people, hanging out, getting high and having a good time and, yeah. and even meeting girls and stuff, you know, before I was like really shy. Yeah. Talk to girls, you know, you smoke and, uh, you know, everything changes right for you, you know? So you, you felt at the moment when you were smoking weed, mm -hmm. it just kind of made, it, you felt like yourself for the first time. Is that how you would describe it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And at what point, so you're smoking weed and a lot of times people say that marijuana is the gateway drug. Yeah. Did that lead you into other things? Um, sort of. I mean, at that time, the neighborhood I was around, they didn't really have like really heavy drugs, you know? Yeah. You know, that was a good thing or else I'd probably be yeah. a lot worse off. But, um, you know, it did lead me into stealing mm -hmm. and things like that. And I got caught by the police right so yeah. um that actually helped me right yep. because then i got into therapy okay. when i was already 15 yeah and they throw me into therapy right drug yeah. counseling and that, that actually made a difference right so yeah. um i guess one of the things they told me was like uh you know we're all there there's like maybe five other kids and uh they asked us the question, you know, where, where you see yourself in five years from now and stuff. And, yeah. Uh, and everybody, you know, they didn't care. They're just like, I just want to keep smoking weed all my life, you know. But I actually wanted to do something with my life. And I said, well, I probably shouldn't hang out with these guys because all they care about is getting high, right? Yeah. So uh, I wanted to make a change. So, uh, you know, I passed my drug test and I proved to the counselor that, you know, mm -hmm. I was off of drugs, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, I thought, you know, it's good news. I'm, I'm going to yeah. change my life. Right. You know, I'm 15 years old. I have my whole future ahead of me. And the guy, the counselor's like, well, um, uh, when you're 18, you need to get into a group like a self-help group. I was like, what is that? You know, like, you're going to have to be in there for the rest of your life. And you're probably not going to live a normal life. I was like, what? Wow, yeah. this is the counselor this was, saying yes, this? this was, he was so the counselor hard, is saying yeah. to you to get into a 12-step yes. group is what he's recommending. Yeah. So you're, so, wow, okay. I so mean, he, that, it, he, he told me pretty, you know, he was pretty. He was pretty stern. Yeah. And there's two elements that I pull out of what you were saying. One is it feels like the people you were with had no hope. No. And then the other one was this need that anytime we're suffering from addiction, we got to change the people, places, and things. Were those yeah. elements of, oh, yeah. I of mean, you that was, being in recovery? That was some of it. You know, just change your environment. You got to change everything. But, of course, he was like, I'm a counselor. I'm really good. But you're, you're only going to stay sober so long. The It's proven fact that, like, the people who stay sober – certain for many years and yeah. want to live a sober life have to be a part of an, a 12 step program mm -hmm. or something like that. Right. Yeah. So he's like, you're going to relapse. I was like, what? I'm not going to relapse. I don't want to go back. Right. He's yeah. Like, no, you're going to relapse. There's, I'll give you a year. I was like, God, this guy is just tough on me. You know, <laughs> he was tough on you, but he was, I mean, I think there were, there are certainly facts in there and i do mm -hmm. you know i deal with men and, and women suffering from addiction every day i yeah. and one of the keys we all have to realize i've been sober for years now is it's a daily it's 24 hours we yeah. just have to be sober today so i never try to project on person yeah. failing or or succeeding i'm yeah. just saying look you know, the, the thing, the biggest revelation for me was when my counselor said to me, can you just be sober for 24 yeah. hours? I'm yeah. like, yeah, I, I understand that. I can, yeah. I could do anything for 24 hours was my comment back to her. Yeah. So I'm a bit surprised that he, 
he he tended on the scale of positive to negative. He yeah. tended with, to be kind of negative. And mm -hmm. I think when we are dealing with people in addiction, you know, we need hope. You yeah. lose hope when you're in addiction, right? Because you're in this cycle, uh, this vicious yeah. cycle. So one of the things we need is hope. And it feels like he was still in some of your hope there. Yeah. I mean, I was at the time, you know, sober and I was, yeah. I had all the, I was really excited and, you know, wanted to do, go to school and all that. And, but he's like, this is the reality of addiction, right? Wow. This is. So was he, so, uh, so you're in this, you're 15, 16 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And where was the Lord in all of this at that point? You know, I, I'm from a Christian family and stuff, okay. but at that time I was kind of rebellious, you know? Right. So, um, I guess I Did really you didn't believe in the Lord. Um, not really, you know, I never, but you were going to church. And I know all that. I, mean, I would go to church with my, my parents to take me to church, but I never really like said the Lord's prayer. I mean, accepted Christ as yeah. my savior or anything like that. You know, I would just go and, uh, yeah. Wow. So. so you, you had never, so you were attending church, mm -hmm. but you had you been baptized? Nope. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Where you, did your parents, do you feel like they were pushing you or they were just letting you discover who the Lord is and was at that time? Well, I think, uh, my mom just wanted me to have my own, uh, you know, encounter yeah. with God and, uh, yeah. for me to be, you know, ready, you mm -hmm. know? Okay. Yeah. So now you're sober. Now what happens next? You don't, you're not really with the Lord. You're just attending church mm -hmm. and you're sober. Now what happened? Um, well, I mean, I'm doing pretty good, had a job, yeah. got a job going to school and, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, it just, I relapsed just, yeah. you know, so, I mean, had you changed the people, places and things or yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. So do you remember and recall what triggered you? Oh man, that's kind of, uh, I'm not really sure. You okay. Know. So, so you, as my dad would say, so you fall down, do you get back up and what happens then? And when, at what point do we encounter Christ? Yeah. I mean, uh, I really, I, you know, I had that in the back of my mind with the, the counselor yeah. told me, I was like, I'm going to prove this guy wrong. You know, yeah. I'm going to make it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I got, you know, really bad, you know, okay. into it. But, uh, I think I remember reading the Bible one night you know just what I, made, I had you, never do you recall what made you pick the bible up i don't know i just I had never read the bible you know okay i never read the bible and i opened it up to like proverbs and then everything in there was like what i was living you yeah know? i was like wow divine intervention yeah divine i was like well intervention. you know why didn't i know this before i would have you know yeah if i would have knew all this i wouldn't have to go through all what i was going through right yeah and uh so it just uh, sparked interest in me to go. To mm -hmm. So you read the Bible. So what have so you you feel like okay, this is the Lord speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Now where is the moment of conversion and baptism? Yeah, I mean, I go Lord? to at the time we were attending uh, Shady Grove yeah. Church, right? Yeah, my parents. So I go to church and and they have all the worship and everything, and it's like wow, it's just yeah. it was totally different from the environment I was in. I was hanging around with drug addicts on yeah. you know and it was just a really bad environment right uh -huh. with guns and all kinds of things just really bad neighborhood and stuff in the area yeah so it was just so different you know see everybody worshiping I was yeah like, wow and it was just you know and from there little by little i think i started attending a uh, uh, pastor uh bible study he was having a bible yeah. study he was you know a friend of the families and uh and I started going there and I was trying to, you know, get yeah. out of the place I was at. I knew I had yeah. to get out of it. Right. Everybody, it was, you know, I was hanging out with people that were doing like heroin, crack. and It was just really bad, you know? Oh, wow. You were in, so you were seeing, it's all bad. And it's all yeah. drugs, alcohol, drugs. I, I always tell people it, it's all bad and yeah. it all has consequences and it all does damage to us. We talk a lot about the physical but we don't talk as much about the spiritual side effects because I was telling somebody, sometimes when you're dealing with alcoholism and, and drug addiction, 
man, you see things in the spiritual realm that it takes a while to unsee. So you're seeing all of this. And at what part does the Holy Spirit move on your heart and start to change you and transform get, As soon as at the Bible studies, you know, the pastor leads me to Christ. Yeah. Right. And uh, that, that completely changed me. You know, I okay. had experience there. So you have the experience. Now, are you sober before the experience or after the experience? Um, I'm kind of getting sober, right? I'm, okay. I'm sober before the experience, right? Okay. All so, right. So the Lord shows up and then tell me what happens next after the... I mean, I begin, I begin to, you know, try to get involved into church, start getting involved into church, right? Yep. And, uh, you know, at that time... I, you know, coming off of drugs and stuff, it was, it was really tough. Mm -hmm. It was not, it's not easy. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess your mind really messes with you. And, uh, yeah. and I think I had some really severe depression, right. I started okay. getting really, really bad depression. It was, uh, I don't know what it was from. Right. Well, but, you gave your life to Christ. And mm -hmm. a lot of times when, We've been in the world. We pull ourselves. The Lord calls us out of the world and into the church and into Christ. There is these moments where we have the spiritual warfare, right? Where the enemy is just firing darts and you become depressed. You get weary. Because I recall kind of feeling that going like, what's going on? I'm, I'm with the Lord now. Why do I have, why am I not feeling like myself right yeah. um do you believe that was spiritual and how did you handle that um well i mean i didn't even know what was going on you know i thought there's you know i guess I, I i saw myself as a bad person and then mm. you know maybe this was something i deserved right i didn't yeah. understand really you know until uh i bump into a uh like a psychologist right and yep. uh, they tell me you're depressed you know they could just look at you and tell yeah you know, i could just look at you and tell you just saying that you know yeah and uh i was like well what is depression <laughs> i didn't even know what depression was right yeah i was like do you feel like this and i was like yeah exactly right and uh you know i started getting treatment okay. right and um by then you know i was drinking yeah. i didn't know i was i couldn't drink i didn't know that yeah yeah I was drinking and my drinking started getting really bad, you know. Okay. Um, you know, I was just substituting it, trying to, you know, take away the depression and things like that and substituting it for the drugs, right? Yeah. I thought it was legal. I was like, drug, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm of age yeah, and I could drink, <laughs> but no. It's, it's amazing how the enemy deceives us. We deceive ourselves. And we replace one bad habit with another bad habit. Yeah. You were already depressed yeah. and now you're consuming alcohol is what? A depressant. Yeah. So you're going to become more depressed. So you're spiraling again. Yeah. And what happens and how do you get out of this hole? Okay. Um, I mean, it took, you know, a pretty pretty drastic events you know okay uh one of my brothers had to pass away basically okay. to for me to really you know most of the friends that i was hanging out with that were using drugs were pretty much ending up in jail or dying overdosing yeah. and things like that and uh you know and that wasn't this is good and i want to camp here for a minute because a lot of times um, i'm with families and people and spouses and they think well, the consequences of what we see and what we do should get us sober. But what you saw and what you were doing wasn't enough to get you sober. No, I didn't. I didn't know how to get sober. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had already stopped going to church. Right. I stopped believing because, mm -hmm. you know, things were just going so bad for me. I just yeah. I had stopped going to church. Were you praying? Yeah, I mean, I was praying. I would pray a lot, and I would, you know, trying to trying to do my best to to find God. Right? So you stop going to church, but you're praying. At any point in there, did you feel like, as the word said, "Hey, God is with me. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me." Did you? What were you feeling at? That well, I moment? mean, I got to a point where I was pretty much atheist, right? 
Yeah, and hey, you know, most alcoholics are agnostic, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was getting to that. I was already at that point. And I was pretty much. What was driving that? Atheism. Was it, was that was that your circumstances, or was it twelve step recovery, or was it the people yeah. around you, or was I still hadn't even? Dep- yeah, I never despair. been. I still hadn't even gone to an AA. You know, I knew they had told me hey, something about yeah. going to AA. I was like, I don't need that, right? So this was this. Do you feel like it was the circumstances because things were so so bad? Yeah, definitely. Okay, definitely. you. So it caused you to doubt the goodness of God. Yeah. So one of the things that we both know now is that the enemy shows up and questions the goodness of God, just like he did with Eve. Like if God is good, why would he allow this in your life? Right. Because I remember thinking the same thing when I got to, to rehab, man, I was, I was mad at God. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, how could you let this happen? Well, when I really unpacked it, I was experiencing the consequences from my own actions, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Cause God is, God is good. It doesn't mean we live in a world where there is suffering and mm-hmm. it says in the Bible, we will have trials and tribulations. So now how did you recapture your faith in God mm-hmm. and restore your yeah. relationship with the good it, Lord? It took a while with the, for me to be uh, being in the program and stuff for, okay. for me to start, you know, having faith and, Mm-hmm. things like that you know i was just didn't believe anything anymore you know i didn't even believe you know i mean nothing i you know right so you felt like in your soul there was was there like a void or a hole oh, definitely or, a void, so yeah. you were you were just existing and not really living yeah living for yourself or living in christ as we're called to do yeah. so when does all of that take the turn that leads you to the life that you have now well yeah i mean like i said uh my brother had passed away yeah. and uh you know i started really questioning i was like you know am i gonna have to pay for all the things i've done you know and this this is like you know yeah i was like well how do i get out of this you know yeah. how do i get all my friends are you know going to jail and things like that you know how am i gonna be able to escape that right yeah. and get out of it how how am i gonna do this right and mm-hmm. uh I think, uh, you know, I was seeing count, uh, counselors and things like that at the time. And one of the things I started seeing my brother, right? Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would see him after he passed away. I felt like a day afterwards, you know, like he had, he hugged me. Right. I felt mm-hmm. this just all through my body. Like, right. And, uh, I would see him and I, I thought I was going crazy. Right. I was taking medication yeah. and drinking. And I didn't uh, believe in that stuff. I yeah. was like, this is not real. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm seeing things, you know? Yeah. And uh, I talked to the counselor and she's like, well, well, don't you, I thought she was going to be on my side and say, yeah, we'll just give you more pills yeah. and this will go all go away. Right. Yeah. But no, she's like, well, don't you believe in any God or afterlife or anything? I'm like, what? I'm like, no, I don't believe any of that stuff. Right. Yeah. I believe in science and all that. Right. But not, I stopped believing in that stuff. Right. Yeah. It's like, well, maybe, you know, maybe you should think about it, you know, because usually people who have faith and do a lot better, right? Yeah, with the grieving, because we, yeah. we understand what the word says. Uh-huh. Oh, man. So you... So that kind of got to me. And then my aunt was actually inviting me to AA. Yeah. And you know, she'd come and talk to me and things like that. And I told her, you know, I don't believe in God, you know. I thought she kept want to take me to church I yeah like, i just don't believe in god i'm sorry and she was like well do you believe in a higher power i was well i couldn't argue really i was like well i don't know maybe yeah yes, yeah yeah so i mean that that kind of got me and stuck with me and you know i just have it in my in my head you know thinking about that so you're going 12 step so 12 step starts to work and then walk us through the process of how you got back to the lord god okay i mean yeah, I get into 12 step, right? And mm-hmm. uh, at first they're telling me, you know, oh, you need to pray. And we, I'm like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, but actually, you know, they start, I start seeing gradually, you know, yeah, how God was changing things in my life. Yeah. Right? And I was like, wow, you know, and they'll tell me, uh, you know, what do you want God to, 
to do for you. I was yeah. Like, what? And I was like, I, I don't believe, you know. They're like, well, ask for something, and, and you'll see that he'll do it for you. Yeah. Like, okay. And thing, the things that they told me, you know, actually came started coming true, right? Okay. And uh, I started gaining faith that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's your family at during this whole process? What are they doing and saying? Um, I guess they just don't understand me, right? They're just like, you know, this guy's, you know, we can't help him, right? They've taken me to church. They've done everything they've, they've known how to do, right? And, uh, yeah, so they, they just don't understand me at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you think they just said... Here They're you praying go. for me. Definitely. Here you go, Lord. Help, they were help definitely able. praying for me. I know that. Yeah, yeah, we we definitely. I I know your brother, so I know they were were definitely praying for you. Yeah. So when was that that moment of discovery? Like God, I know you are real because you just showed up. Yeah. Moment. I mean, that one night I was, uh, you know, I was drinking till like three in the morning i would usually drink till like three in the morning and okay i see my brother right and i'm like mm -hmm. i'm like okay i'm seeing him right and he just comes up to me it's like you know you be happy yeah i'm like wow and uh i i didn't want to believe it right but then yeah. a scripture pops into my mind i don't uh, i don't remember the scripture right yeah but it's something about like um uh, you know even if if someone comes from the dead and you know, you're still not going to believe, right? Yeah. Right. Even if someone comes back from the dead and tells you yeah, that there's an after, you, you won't believe, right? You're just that's how, right? So that that scripture came to me. I was like, wow. And then in part of the scripture says, you know, he has the uh, the priests and the prophets. If you don't believe the priests and the prophets that are on earth, they're not going to believe someone who comes back from the dead, right? Yeah. So I just like, well, God, you know, if you're real, where's the prophets and priests that you're you know you haven't sent anybody to me to yeah preach to me or tell me what to do right yeah the very next night you know i'm starting to drink and i'm like okay we'll have another you know drink till three four in the morning but yeah at 10 o'clock about 10 maybe my aunt shows up and she just walks right up to me she's like, are you ready you know and i was like is this the person yeah. who's sending me and i'm not actually listening right yeah i was like yeah i'll do whatever i was like that's when I started, you know, this is the person God's sending to me. I need to listen to them. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I so said, I'll do whatever, you know. Yeah. I just told him, I, I just have a problem, you know, I can't stop drinking. She's like, yeah. that's not a problem, you know. Yeah. We'll get up, we'll get through that, right? Yeah. And uh, so they take me to do my, my uh, steps. They yeah. take me to the program and, uh, you know, kind of detox and all that. And yeah. uh, so do my inventory all these all that yeah you go through 12 step process yeah and uh, i remember them kneeling me down right we're kind of out in the uh in a like a ranch area and out in the country yeah and uh, they kneel me down and then i remember they, i thought it was in front of this big fire right yeah and uh so it was like okay i didn't think of anything of it right yeah but i re i figured out at you know later on that there was no fire. There was, was like, no fire. There was no fire. Yeah. There was just a cross right there. Yeah. They had me in front of. I was like, nah. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And I had asked, you know, that night I was like, well, if you're real, I want to see you, right? I want to yeah. see you. I won't believe unless I see it. Yeah. And take away my the alcohol and take away the cigarettes. And I mm -hmm. didn't want to smoke anymore. Yeah. And definitely enough that after doing that, you know, I saw God. Yeah. But I stopped drinking, stopped smoking. Wow. Wow. Exactly that. Just that he Just answered to, that prayer. Just to prove that yeah. he's real, you know. Yeah. It, I have heard that prayer you prayed. I know a lot of alcoholics and addicts who have said and prayed that prayer. And I think God answers that prayer. This is one man focus group in perspective because you, that is a heart felt prayer yeah your soul is crying out to the lord saying if you're real do something show me yeah. and i need it right now and in in that that prayer is 
is fear. Yeah. It's fear in that prayer, right? There's a verse in the Bible. The psalmist says, I cried out to the Lord. He heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. And I think a prayer when we engage our soul, our total being, right? Mind, will, and emotions. And we cry out to the Lord, help for help that the Lord answers that prayer. And a lot of times he answers it and manifests his presence as well as answering that prayer. And that sounds like the encounter that you had. Yeah, definitely. So from that point, where where do you go? Wow. I mean, everything just changes mm -hmm. completely. I mean, depression's gone, everything. Yeah, oh, wow. I mean, it's like the first time you can hear the birds singing. Yeah. You know, and the sun comes out and you can feel, yeah. you know, it's like totally different world, you know. Okay. Totally different world. So, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, and I just stay in the program, right? Yeah. And I keep growing in mm -hmm. the program. And uh, so, I mean, it hasn't really been, everything's been easy yeah. you know there's yeah. ups and downs yeah and uh so i mean pretty much i've been sober since then you yeah know? well talk about we both uh having gone through addiction and recovered in christ there is this process a lot of times that the lord takes us through because people we go off to treatment we get in 12 step and people want us to be fixed, so to speak, right? Like you did treatment, you go to 12 step, you should be fixed. Talk yeah. about how that's not true. <laughs> no, I mean, like I said, it took me a long time to really come back to God. Like, you know, yeah, it took a long time. You know, yeah. I've done my inventory several times. Yeah, I've done it several times. And, you know, this last time I did it, I kind of. Wow, it was very impactful because yeah. it's like and I actually feel like I'm walking with God, right? Yeah. You know, that yeah. did when I did this third step, it's kinda like, you know, I'm really giving my, my life to God and really surrendering surrendering to him, right? Yeah. And uh and I had never done that before. Because I didn't at first when I did it, I didn't even believe in God, you know. Yeah. I believed in a higher power. I was like, Yeah, oh, that's Yeah. You know. But after a long process of seeing so many people recover from alcohol, yeah. so many like miracles, literally, yeah. you know, yeah. you see people come in and their lives change one after another. And it's like, there's something here that I can't, I can't deny, you know? Yeah. And I've actually, I mean, it sounds kind of out there, but I mean, I've, I've actually seen like, I don't know, like a being that comes in and mm -hmm. and helps people, right? It's mm -hmm. not like, you know, me or anybody else. It's just... Well, the, uh -huh. the, the transformation in the calling of one to Christ is the work of the Holy Spirit, yeah. right? Yeah. I often look at my own journey and I say, man, a lot of times the Lord is warning us, putting up yield, stop signs for... The things that we're doing yeah. and we all go, well, God wasn't talking to me. Well, I looked at my circumstances. He was speaking through those. I looked at the people like your aunt in your life. He was speaking through her. He was speaking yeah. through your family. He's trying to, he's got you in church. So there's all these things that the Lord is doing. He may not speak audibly to us, yeah. but he's speaking through our trials, our tribulations, our circumstances. And most importantly, other people yeah. speaking, he's speaking in and through them. Talk about why you think we don't listen and look for the voice of the Lord. And then even kind of when we see it and hear it, we don't obey it all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's just for me, I think it's been uh, wanting to do things my way. Right? Mm. My own will be done. Right. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, I had a, I struggled with that a lot. Right. Yeah. I was like, well. I'll, I'll do the program, I'll do it, but don't touch this area. I'll do this on my own. Yeah. And that's one thing I really struggled with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Well, we, we, and I will admit here on camera, we want to, I did, I wanted to compartmentalize my life. And there were certain parts. I'd let God in. Hey, God, you are Lord 
and savior of this part. But this over here belongs to me. And what I realized, it all belongs to him, right? It, uh, he's the master and our Lord and savior of it all. And probably one of the toughest parts of uh, addiction is we tend to be stiff neck. Like the Bible says about the Israelites, you're a stick neck people. Mm -hmm. Well, addicts and alcoholics tend to be rebellious, stiff neck, self-centered, and yeah. a bit self-absorbed. And we want to bask in our own self-sufficiency. Yeah. Well, none of that aligns well with having a Lord, <laughs> a master or a savior, right? Yeah. The Lord God. So the hardest part for me was getting in that cadence of daily surrender. Like, Oh, I got to wake up and surrender to the Lord God's will again. Talk about how you do that and how that manifests itself in your life and to keeping you sober. Yeah. I mean, like I said, this, this last time I, I did my 12 steps, um, that really hit home with me right there. The, yeah. uh, surrendering, you know, what you know, I've been struggling and, you know, through the, uh, uh, recovery and, uh, that's one of the things I've, I've, I haven't done completely surrender. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've, now that I have surrendered, I've just seen, I mean, just drastic d yeah. changes drastically, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, I want, I, I want to keep that, you know, yeah. I want to keep that. I don't want to lose that. And it's, like I said, I, it's like, I'm walking with God now and, yeah. you know, like, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, even though I might not want to do it, yeah. I, but my weight is, is always, you know, ended up pretty bad. You know, yeah. we, so. we cause a lot of, when I say we, those who suffer from drug and alcohol addiction, we tend to cause a lot of self-inflicted pain on ourselves. Right. And God, I, I thought when I was in my addiction, I want you to talk about this as well. Did you ever think that God could, as Romans 8, 28 says, God will work all things together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I remember being in treatment and, and being in my recovery going, I don't really know, Lord, how you're going to use this for good. I yeah. just could not see it. And fast forward, we have From Beer to the Bible, our ministry, our show, and our podcast, and we're getting to help people. But I couldn't see that back yeah. then. So talk about that in your own personal journey. Yeah, I mean, I've been able to, through the experience and everything I've lived, I've been able to help a lot of other people. You yeah. Know, hundreds, basically. Yeah. You know, of the time I've been in recovery. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just sharing my story, that's it's very simple, you know. Yeah. God will turn that and use that to all the mistakes I've made, you know, to, yeah. to help another person. Now I'm going to, we're going to pivot just a little. And you know, in our community, the black community and the brown community, Hispanic, Latino community, getting counseling for drug and alcohol addiction is not always widely accepted. We're both spiritual people and we believe, hey, pray about it and you know, the Lord's going to show up. Your story of divine intervention is great, but that story wasn't mine. I prayed, I did all that, but the process the Lord had for me was to go to treatment and work with counselors and, and different pastors to process me through the sobriety that I have now. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about why you think in our communities, counseling and getting help for addiction is not more prevalent well um I, I, it's kind of hard to say right um yeah. i know that you know i've i'm in a lot of uh hispanic groups spanish-speaking groups yeah and uh i guess maybe some some of them are maybe you know immigration status and stuff yeah. like that is not mm -hmm. you know they you know they the language barrier yeah and uh so i mean they they tend to maybe go through AA or some other mm -hmm. means, mm -hmm. but they're typically not not gonna go to like a like a rehab a, with counselors and all kinds of things like yeah. that, right? Well, it, it in twelve step recovery, in my time in the rooms, man, in the DFW area, I can probably count the number of times I run into other black people. 
I'd probably say, I know for sure it's less than 20. I oh, know yeah. for sure. And I've been in the recovery space for a while. Uh, I know, and I'm going to speak, I can't speak for all black people, but I'm going to, to look at and speak from some of the facts and some of the perceptions of it, right? Is that um, on the whole, we probably get less counseling than, yeah. than most of the other groups. Uh, we tend to be super, super spiritual and want to pray about a lot of stuff, right? And I, I truly believe God does do and intervene and touch people and heal them of addiction. And you're an example of it. And I know some other people, but I also know that God does work through doctors and he does work oh, yeah. through counselors. And I want people who look like me and who look like us, I want you to be comfortable reaching out, getting the counseling, getting the help that you need, whether that's a treatment center or whether that's 12 step uh, recovery or whether that's going to your church and asking for help and resources to get people involved in helping you recover from, from addiction. Uh, I lost several family members over the last few years of just, and I'm going, we can get you help. We have a ministry, we know resources and we know people and we weren't able to do so. And that that's the part that burns in me for all people who are suffering from addiction. Uh, I want to let you know there, there are resources, no matter your, your financial situation, no matter uh, how you feel, there is something available and there are people like ourselves mm -hmm. who want to help you. Yeah. I mean, basically, from, basically for me, I thought, you know, everything's basically insurance. If you don't have insurance then yep. you, you, yep. you know, it's going to be very hard to get mm -hmm. into any place. It's really expensive. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, yeah. Um, and, and that's where we come along in our ministry. Mm -hmm. We, we have cases of people who literally don't have anything, no income, no insurance. And we're able to, to be the conduit to connect them to the resources where if you don't have insurance uh, or you have limited insurance, limited funds, there are programs out there. Now, in all honesty, the intake process may be a bit longer than if you did have insurance. And yes, the options kind of shrink down, yeah. but again, there's stuff out there to, to help them. Um, so if you need help, reach out to us at from beer to the Bible.com. So Abel, as we kind of wind up, I want to hear what God has laid on your heart, uh, one, and then two, through your whole recovery journey, the, we call the show, we both agreed that this would be called Divine Intervention because mm -hmm. he's healed by the power of the Lord uh, through the grace, mercy, enabling, and equipping of the Holy Spirit. So thank you, Lord, for that. But what is the greatest takeaway that you would say you would give to someone who's suffering today and any words of encouragement you would have for them? Well, I mean, just, you can get better. I mean, if, if you don't believe me, I mean, just come to me and I'll, I'll show you, right? Mm -hmm. If you do what we tell you to do, if you go through, uh, the programs, if you do what you're supposed to, I mean, you'll get better. Definitely. I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that God will help you. Right. Mm -hmm. so. And, and also encourage our, we, we do have Spanish speaking viewers and listeners mm -hmm. of our YouTube channel and our podcast. Let them know that it's okay to reach out to us because we've partnered with you. And if you speak only Spanish yeah. or if you're bilingual, we can help you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I've basically been in mostly Spanish groups. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of help. So I could definitely help anybody. Yeah. Spanish. Well, that's what we, we want you to know. And Abel, I have so enjoyed you being here, man. You are a blessing. Yes. Please keep doing the work that you're doing definitely. in and through our church gateway. And then also in and through our partnership uh, with From Beer to the Bible. And as we leave you today, I, I kept thinking and I had this burden on my heart. Um, we live in such a busy world. Mm -hmm. We have so many distractions. We have so many challenges. Lord, 
wanted me to encourage our, our viewers and our listeners today to remember what the psalmist said. Be still and know that I am God. Be still, still yourself, calm yourself, and take time to know that there is a God and that God is, is available to you. He loves you and he wants you healed. He does not want you addicted. So he's willing to do what he's done for Abel, what he's done for myself, which is restore, renew, and give you regeneration in and through Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. We will see you next time on From Beer to the Bible. Thank you for tuning in to this week's From Beer to the Bible. Make sure to tune in next week when Irvin and Sarah gift you with even more addiction recovery information. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember, we're always there for you.